the next two weeks. I'm not sure how long it'll go because we have some things going on the rest of this month. But I want to talk uh, this morning on preparing for greater glory. Um, and so this is going to be an interesting message. And I'm glad you're here to receive the word of the Lord today. On April 18th of this year, uh, our elders and board met. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to compile 18 plus years of prophetic words. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, was, that was quite an evening. But I want to just kind of impart a few of the things that uh, uh, Holy Spirit's been speaking here. And so uh, as far back as 2005, that's not around the corner. That's been a, been a while. But it kind of started this way. We are like Gideon's army. Now, if you, if you don't know the story of Gideon, just go back through the Bible and read that story, Judges. You, you, you'll get a good, good picture of um, Gideon's army. God said you have too many people. So you've got to narrow it down to 300. And you know the story. I won't want to preach that. I've got other things I want to say. The point is, here's what was said. We are like Gideon's army, a small army, and God has great things in store for us. Hallelujah. The Lord will bring broken ones to you. Over the years, we've had even pastors that have sat in the services. They just, and uh, God is in the restoration, and he's doing that even today. The Lord is saying, I want to catch you all on fire like you have never been before. Red hot for him. Now, I don't think we've all got there yet. You know what I'm saying? I think there have been seasons. Can we all just be honest here today that, man, we've been so on fire, especially those seasons when we first came to the Lord. I mean, you know, nothing is in, you know, hey, I'll go, I'll go Monday to, your, to that Bible study and I'll hit Wednesday to church. And I, I mean, you went everywhere and all over the place. I know things are different in our life today. But the point is that this is what the Lord wants to catch us all on fire. And so uh, thank God for that. You are going to have a great harvest in growth and outgrowth. A congregation in deep intercession. God is going to bring you into, this is interesting because this happened years ago and here we are today. You've, seen, you've witnessed today a fulfillment of one of the prophetic words. God is going to bring you into a deep understanding of the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. That was not happening and, uh, but, you know, God has to start with somebody. And I'll never forget going to that, that lunch. I didn't know anybody. And, but felt, you know, as a minister, and probably like you get a lot of mail at your house, but as a minister, you get a lot. There's so many conferences. So many's got, you know, I mean, there, there's just so much that you're just overwhelmed. And pretty soon you just say, Lord, you know. <laughs> and, but I felt led that uh, several years ago, 16 maybe, uh, to go to this brunch with uh, Coach McCartney. And we've heard the story before in Raleigh, Washington, about Road to Jerusalem. And I thought, because we were looking for someone to blow the shofar. I didn't really know what that all was about. And that ignited something in me. And from then on, it's just been history story. Hallelujah. But that's what was spoken over us. It says, many in the congregation to be great evangelists. We have some, but I got, God's going to raise up more. Now, here's the interesting thing. Have times specifically to pray for everybody. I mean, this is what was mentioned years ago, you know, and sometimes prophetic words almost happen instantly, but then sometimes it takes time. Some of you are probably not walking in some of the things that's been spoken over you, but hang in there. Uh, don't abandon those. If it's God, they will be fulfilled if you're willing to let that happen. Um, don't worry about the storehouse. The Lord will take care of it. You know, we, we've gone through seasons, and I've been here 23, we've been here 23 years, and uh, if you ask me, what would you rather have, more money or less money, I would like to have more money. <laughs> that is spiritual. That's not carnal. <laughs> because I don't ask for it for myself. You know what I'm saying? If I was one of those kind of guys that, you know, I sure wish I'd get more money. or sure, uh, You've never heard that out of my mouth. You're not going to hear that. God is a provider. But what is cool is here, sometimes we do wonder, you know, what's going to happen. But we're living in a season right now. We paid off our loan and and. This year, it's been a great rejoicing. It's so wonderful to be able to do some things that we've been sitting on like a uh, hen on an egg. Or if we just had a few extra bucks, we could help. If we just had just, and not that we're out spending foolishly, no way, no how. And you can look at our records. Yeah, very conservative. But uh, God has been blessing us. And 
And every time we have above our monthly, uh, what our budget is, we, we sow half of that, a tithe, half that goes to Israel. We got like 12 or more ministries that we support in Israel and other places in the world. Just congregation right here. Jack, you know, I don't know, but I think that is amazing. <laughs> you just keep that up. <laughs> Lord, I just say thank you. Give and it shall be given unto you. That's what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I'll move on, otherwise I'll be stick on this little one page. You got seven pages. Hallelujah. <laughs> Intercession will give the answer on what to do with the land. You know, we we drive up here. I've been driving up here. It's like the first time. Lord, what is it you want to do? And we've been we've been expanding that. We got this wonderful fireplace out there. We've been doing. Uh, see, God is lining us up for what is to happen here. We're starting. To, we have people of like faith and like vision, and we've done some amazing things out there. And we got other things that we're going to be doing this year. So excited! You'll hear something probably in the next uh, week or two that we're working on for Rosh Hashanah. We're meeting today actually for that. And if anybody's ever heard of Becca Shea, anybody ever heard of Becca Shea? Some of you have heard of Becca Shea. Well, if you go to Paul Wilbur's Glory of Zion uh, album, you'll hear Becca Shea. And we're bringing Becca Shea in Rosh Hashanah time in September. It's going to be a great time. We're planning some things today. So it's going to be a great, it's going to be great. We've got some wonderful things. And what we want to focus on is the first people group and the first nation people. And so God has something up his sleeve. It's just birth from the spirit. And I don't want to get sidetracked, but just to say that he's got purposes for our land. Sometimes it takes time to figure out what does that look like. Besides cutting the grass, it grows this high. You know, there's more to that than cutting the grass. He says, raising up missionaries who have fervor to go to the ends of the earth. I'm here and proud to say, I mean, some of us have been at different places, but next Sunday, I hope he'll be here. Um, Josh is going to be here, Josh Padgett. I met with him this past week. He's going to be here. I'm so excited to hear this young man fulfilling that prophecy. I, I, I hope you're here next week to hear from him. Just to sit across from a young man. You know, it does us good to talk to young people. And let them in their own way <clears throat> share their vision and how God's touching them. And He was so excited. I said, share that. I don't want to steal his son. Or share that next Sunday. But how God is using him. You know, some people are really natural at talking and, and really, you know. But some, some of us are not like that, you know. And so when we, we're out in the public and we're evangelizing the thing, that, that could be a big stretch for, for us. You know what I'm saying? And Josh has some wonderful things. He'll be here next week, and we want to be part. We want to be part of sending him. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. The land will be used for his kingdom, and it is. But I just want to mention 2007 was the first time <clears throat> it was mentioned to us that this is a place of refuge. Have you ever thought of it? This be a place of refuge for Jewish people in the end time. And we've had three other pe two other people, so three total, have come to us. One was in Israel. And uh, a couple that came here, we thought they were angels. Two ladies didn't know where they came from, didn't tell us where they just popped in, and they were gone. And, uh, and then another Messianic believer who came up. So who knows about that? I'm not trying to camp on there. I'm just trying to say that uh, the land is going to be used for the kingdom. It's used now, but it's going to be used for the kingdom of God. God is going to release an abundance of wealth. I've had people share words, so much money that it's unbelievable. Now, that would be great if I saw that in my time. I don't know if that'll happen, but uh, great wealth. And uh, maybe great wealth is more than just the dollar. You got to think about it. If we're always thinking, you know, if my wallet was thicker due to some bills in there, we might be thinking differently. Prayer is critical to this congregation and this calling. May I say to all of you, let's do not give up. Let's take uh, Luke's chin. Don't give up in prayer. Do not give up. Do not Give up in prayer. God will branch you out of the walls and put you in places of this region. You have more influence, more authority and anointing than you realize. Stake the land. And you'll recall years ago we staked this property with seven stakes, not just the four corners, but uh, seven stakes. And it started out with love and covenant. And uh, then we went peace, love, and and righteousness, that's the kingdom of God, and power, and, um, and then inheritance right up here. We put it up here where the playground is, inheritance. Confidence, clarity, joy, great communication, great steadfastness, great love, and great unity are coming to this house. And we're, we're walking in that. We're experiencing that. We're sensing that in a great major. You are a light on a hill. A couple more here. 
the Lord is sending his weighty glory upon this house. We're going to talk about that. This house will impact communities around you. Although we have more prophetic words than these, these give us a good representation. <laughs> a good representation of what has spoken, what has happened, and what is to come. And we want to honor our prophetic words, as Pastor Dan shared recently, the way you steward the prophetic is in agreement. If we're not in agreement, we're not going to really go very far. But if we come to agreement, now we're not going to come in agreement with something that's totally off the wall that's not of God. We're not saying that. But when it's, you know, centered and God knows this congregation, this is not like any of the other congregations. No one's here in competition. Hey, I'll be the first to say, we're not here. I'm just saying because we're all different people. You know, our brothers and sisters that are meeting in Castle Rock here and other congregations, Franktown, Elizabeth, and Albert, and, and Kyle, and so on and so forth, and Parker, uh, each one of them is unique. Everyone is unique. More recently, we've heard the Lord uh, use these words, greater glory is coming to this house. And that will impact Franktown and Parker and Elizabeth and Albert and possibly Castle Rock. And so as we reviewed these prophetic words, our leaders asked some direct questions with comments. And here's what they brought up. What are we doing to position us to receive the fire of God? His glory. That's a good question. What are we holding on to? What are our distractions? We need to make sure there is humbleness with the body, making sure nothing is hindering our body for his move, something that we are praying and looking into. So I'm going to start today in Exodus chapter 33. And I have three things that I want to deposit today. And we'll pick it up next week because we're not giving the whole haystack. We only give one bale at a time. Amen? Amen. Thank you to those that have cattle. Amen. So in Exodus 33, verse 18, familiar, Moses' request to God, he says this, please show me the glory. Glory is the word used in the Bible to describe God's eternal splendor and majesty. God's glory is the manifestation of his presence as perceived by humans. God has revealed himself through the creation of the world, be it the angelic host, the first man and woman, Adam and Eve in the garden, the patriarchs, all the tribes, the priests, the prophets, the kings, apostles, disciples, all who have died and all living today. God delights in manifesting himself to this world and to each one of us individually as well. The way he reveals himself gets what is of his own choosing. <laughs> Lest we think, well, if we do the, these certain songs and we do certain things, we're going to get the same manifestation. See, how many know you cannot manipulate God? No way, no how. It can be in a still small voice. Just ask Elijah. It could be in thundering and lightning. I'll just go ahead and ask Moses that. It could be in the fiery furnace as Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It could be in a lion's den. Go ahead and call up heaven and ask Daniel how that went. It could be in an earthquake as Paul and Silas. It could be in dancing as David. It could be in worship where tears go. The joy of the Lord is overflowing. You've been healed in the presence of Almighty. Laughter occurs. There's a sweet aroma that sweeps across. Some being slain. Spontaneous heavenly language and so on. It could be in preaching. Where someone is set free by the word. Just deliverance comes. You know, we don't always have to lay hands on people to be set free, although that happens. But the word of God, that, that sharp word can come just through preaching. All of a sudden, some are set free because they had knowledge that they have avoided to receive. But God gave it to them and salvation. Our God is not limited on how he manifests himself to people. 
His great love for us moves him to reveal himself to us. Now I want you to think of various ways his glory has come to you and to this house. Sometimes you're overwhelmed with great emotion. I remember there's been times where people come, they may not stay, they may be here just a few times, but they say, I, I just, every time I come, I just cry. That is softening of hearts because hard hearts, you know, they need, uh, how do you deal with a hard ground? You got to water. Our ground is being soft. Just ask our friends as they backed up the other day. <laughs> soft. <laughs> it's soft. <laughs> no pun intended. That was not in my notes. That was no, it's amazing what you say under the anointing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But great emotion. Yeah, you, you just, you know, people are weeping and see those tears are watering that hard soil, heart, softening up to what God has for them. You know, it's, it breaks our heart, doesn't it, when someone has known the Lord and their heart right now is really hard for the gospel. We all know people like that. And it's hard. And what that says to each of us is we've got to be careful. Each one of us. We can get prideful. We, we just never want to take for granted the goodness of God that's working in their lives. And we get a hard heart. And whatever, whatever's happened, you know, tough things. Just, I don't read it in the scripture where it says, hey, listen, you received me and life is going to be sweet to you. People say, God wants me to be happy. Can I tell you, God wants you to be holy. He wants you to be holy, and let happiness will always be there when you're in God. Okay, well, let me just stay on track here. Otherwise, I'll get off some rabbi trails, and we'll be here for a week. Sometimes, I don't know if you've been in a service, sometimes one side of the room is experienced more glory than the other side. Now, how is that possible? A little room like this? No, no, it's not. We'll talk more maybe about that next week, but that, that can happen. God is moving, and it perhaps is because that section or there's people in that section really need an extra of the presence of God. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Don't, we're not trying here to figure out God. No, we're not trying to figure that out. I'm not, I don't have a capsule. This is how it is. When God's glory is present, we need to be careful, listen to me, of criticism. When it clashes with our theology. some of the samples, loud cries, noises, someone shaking or laughing or whatever. Just because you don't flow in that, don't criticize someone else that God manifests His presence with them that way. Amen. See, this is where we get in trouble. And God is not going to hang around a criticizing house. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. None of us should. If you hang around people that are always criticizing, whether it's the leadership, the way things are going, or your boss, or whatever, those are, not, those are the people you want to hang around with. Critical spirit will attach itself to you, and before you know it, you're going to be criticizing. That is so good preaching, Jack. You hang out. You stay with us. When God's glorious presence, we need to respect and appreciate it and be patient. And allow it to fulfill his purpose. Listen, I don't know what the future looks like, but I'm just kind of setting us up here that we got to be patient. If you come to see how fast you can get out of here, or man, I wish they wouldn't have done that, I wish they would just get to it. See, you're missing the point. And I'm not saying anybody's like that. I'm just making a statement. Maybe someone online should have. But we just need to be patient when we come to the house of God. Now, I'm, I know sometimes sitting for a while can be disturbing. And Hey, listen, if you need to stand and stretch, some of you do that. You're, you're not offending me if you have to stretch. You, know, you don't have to do that. I mean, bring your recliner if you need to. I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, you know, sometimes that's happened. You sit, well, and even when I'm sitting at home, I've got to walk around a little bit because, you know, after a while, my leg gets a little stiff. You know, I've got to move about. And so w nobody's a hero that sits all the time, doesn't do anything, because then they walk away limping like, no, 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 no. I'm talking about being patient with the Spirit of God. See, when you come, you may not be at the place someone else is. 
So, you know, I might have late nights and whatever might have happened. They're kind of barely getting in here, you know, and, and but somebody else was revved up. And I was like, God, you know, a critic of the Holy Spirit would say, see, I wish they would just hurry up. And someone next to you would just, you know, I wish they would just kind of calm down so the pastor can move on. Sure. Listen, we're coming to the house of God. If I didn't believe we had a living God, you, we just have a 30-minute service. We could orchestrate a nice 30-second or 30-minute service. Probably pack the house up. <laughs> but I'm not into that. You're not into that. That's why you're here. I just know your heart. You're, you're here because you want to be patient before the presence of God. And I wish I could wave a little wand, and this is what's going to happen. It doesn't happen. I really don't know week to week how it's going to look. But more practical stuff next week. But just just to stay on track here so I don't get ahead of myself. We need to respect and appreciate his presence and be patient. Someone could be really God working on something. It doesn't mean I've got to stop the service. I'm just saying we just need to have our spiritual antennas out there. and We ought to all come with expectancy, not only for ourselves, but maybe God wants me to minister to somebody. I mean, we're all ministers. This is the, the, the heart of this church. Everyone here is a minister, period. And so you're sitting there and you're worshiping, and God may just reveal something to you about someone over here. While we're in worship, you're not out of order if you went, maybe went around, came this way and said, you know, I don't know, while we're worshiping, I just felt the Lord uh, just share this with me. And you might have a word of knowledge for him. I don't know. But the gifts of the Spirit need to be flowing in this house. And when we're doing it for attention, we're going to smell that. We're going to say, but when we're humble and God, because you know how it is when you come up here, nobody, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Sometimes we're nervous, you know what I mean? It's like, boy, I don't know. And it seems like every time I've had someone come up, that's, man, I'm so nervous. They're always spot on. So don't let that nervousness and that fear take you away from coming up and giving a word. If God's put it on your heart, that should be for the body. It's really important for us to understand that. God wants us to know he is with us always. But there are times when He shows up to impact all who are in His house. And when that happens, it's beautiful. All believers have encounters with the glory of God. He has manifested Himself to each one. And I would just like to take a moment. I think it's great to have our participation. Would someone like to share? an experience of God's glory that has come upon you. Not long, just a little short, but I'd love to just hear that we could be encouraged, God's glory coming upon you that you'd just like to share. Anyone like that? Anybody like to share? Everybody's looking at each other. Don't do that. Okay. Short is the word <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> oh. Well, Faith is being released right now. We're believing for new things. We're believing for new things. Amen. Come on, give me a little supporter. We're believing for some new things to happen. That would be short. S H O R T. I'm kidding. God bless you, brother. A number of years ago, uh, just after I'd gotten baptized in the Holy Spirit, I had a good friend of mine that uh, I'd gone to China with, as well as with a team, and we became friends and prayer partners. And she had said that she had begun to experience some unusual manifestations of the Spirit. Mm. And she said that uh, while she was talking with people, that the manifestation of the Lord would come in waves. She didn't have really good words for it, and I didn't quite understand what she was talking about. But lo and behold, we were having conversation one night. And to my amazement, as we're chatting, I'm hearing the snap, crackle, and pop. It's like electrical, I don't know how to describe it, like static electricity in the atmosphere. And as she and I are talking... I'm just like transported in the spirit. I'm, I'm just 
hearing things and seeing things. And, and without getting into a lot of detail, in the spirit realm, you, you don't necessarily how to know how to put words to it, you know, when stuff like this happens. And um, it was shortly after that that I had had encounters with the Holy Spirit as if when I was in prayer, I got, I, I guess I was like, in, 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 it felt like I was in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that, that was the road that led me to a lot of other encounters with the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Was, yeah, Thank like you. That. Someone else had an experience? Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Because, see, he is manifesting himself to all of us. You may be shy coming up, but I know everyone in this room <laughs> has had an encounter with the king. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's years ago. I mean, I've had encounters since then, but uh, I was at a Rick Joyner conference, and I was, I won't go into the detail of how the Lord was uh, hitting me that, that day, but it was intense, and me and my girlfriends went out for lunch after that session. We looked down. We were all just sparkling, gold sparkles all over us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone else want to share something? Do you want me to come to you, or, or, or can you come? How about halfway? Yeah, that way the camera will. Got to stay in there. I've had a lot of encounters with the Lord, but one that I was remembering this morning mm. was almost nine years ago. In September, it'll be nine years since I went to Israel with Jack, yeah. with the Promise Keepers. I met Raleigh Washington and oh, so many wonderful people there. But when our plane touched down, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, feel the, you feel the wheels touching the ground in Tel Aviv. I, was, I couldn't stop crying. Mm. It was the, God was saying, this is my land. Mm. This is the jewel of the world. This is my place. You're here and there's glory here. There's glory here. Wow. Can you come? Hallelujah. I mean, I know all of us have had amazing encounters. Thank you, ma'am. So I hesitate to share this because um, it's very, very private, very, very personal, but Years ago when we were part of Pastor Randy Scott's ministry and Power Invasion Ministries, yeah. um, my husband then, Trent, and I were doing all sorts of stuff as the facilities managers and janitorial, and mm -hmm. we helped run all the different ministries. We assisted them. But we were always in the sound booth because Trent ran the sound. <laughs> and so when he had to do something, I would take over in the sound booth. But I remember one night, you know, we were, we were going through, I don't know what else to call it, but revival. I know people debate what revival is, but the glory of God hit me back in that sound booth with everything happening. In our services, we would have prayer services that would start at 6 o'clock in the evening, and we would literally go all night because Trent and I would close up the church, and we would still have people in the altars, and we'd be there, and it's 3 in the morning, and we're like, what do we do? And Pastor Randy was like, leave him. Just let him stay there. <laughs> so our apartment was in the church, and so we would leave the lights on, and all through the night we would come back and check, and these people would still be in the altars asleep, but some of them were in the spirit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they'd get up the next morning to go to work, and this went on for, I think it was like 18 weeks. But during that time, I'm in the sound booth, and there was a service where the glory of God had come in so powerfully where people were in the floors, like, we would call it, you know, eating carpet. <laughs> and our carpets were white, but we had oil stains all over the carpet. And I would try to clean that. And we would literally dump entire bottles of oil over people. <laughs> and, and, you know, God's presence was manifesting in such a powerful way. People did not want to leave that service. And we would leave our kids, those of us that were part of the leadership in the ministry, we'd bring our sleeping bags and pillows, and the kids would camp out in that glory, um, that's what my two oldest were growing up in. But one night I'm back in the sound booth and I felt something hit me mm. and I'm down like this and I cannot get up. And I, I took a breath 
and I felt his glory kind of crashing, and the only thing I can think of, it, it was waves, like, crashing, like, boom, and then I'm down, I can't stand up, I'm supposed to be running sound, <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on, and then his glory would come again, crash, and this went on for hours that night, and then finally we were up in the altars, and, and I'm, I want to be careful because this is so holy and so intimate. I'm not mm. just throwing this out there. So please don't stand in judgment. You weren't there. Don't try to question it. Don't try to pick it apart mm -hmm. because I'm sharing something very holy with yeah. you yeah. that I would rather not because I don't, I don't want it touched. Mm -hmm. Very sacred moment. But um, the glory of God came in such a powerful way that I was down and I couldn't take a breath. And it went from the crashing of the waves, the crashing of the waves, to just he was there. And it was heavy, like a mountain on me. Mm. And I could barely take a breath. And I knew it was his glory. I knew it was his presence. And I don't even know how long it lasted. But I had to plead with him to stop. Mm. Because I literally was afraid I was going to die. And I'm not saying that, exaggerating a point. I felt like... <coughs> I could not breathe. And so I, I pleaded with God to stop because mm. that was probably about an hour of that mm -hmm. because I was afraid. I didn't understand. Now <laughs> I will think to myself, what better way to die <laughs> <laughs> than to be crushed <laughs> under the be, weight yeah. of his glory. Yeah. But walking away from that now, nothing in my life will ever satisfy me again. Mm. He ruined me <laughs> in that place. Hallelujah. And I will never be the same. And mm. that's what his glory does. If, yeah. he, if he reveals himself like that, it's an unveiling. When people yeah. say his glory manifested, he's unveiling himself. Mm. Yeah. He's revealing himself. Mm. He's removing the mystery. He's removing the hiddenness. And he lets us taste. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Similar, similar testimony to what you experienced. I was at a, a Randy Clark, Bill Johnson conference at The Rock, um, and this was like probably f 10, 15 years ago. Mm. Um, and the glory was so intense in that mm. place. They did an altar call asking people to come up if you wanted to receive the gift of healing. I went up to the altars and hundreds, I mean, this, the place seats 800 I'm or so in, sure, that, yeah. in that sanctuary. And um, the glory was so intense and I heard, I heard the Lord say, don't let them touch you. And I'm like, what? Mm. I, I came up to receive, and he said, don't let them touch you. Mm. And so I said, well, what am I supposed to do? They're coming around praying over everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, go to the side area. Well, there's a side yeah. walkways that go on either side of that altar at the rock. And I walked over to one of those side hallways, and the next thing I know, I was down. Mm -hmm. And similar to what you experienced, it was wave after wave after wave. And they had done the altar call, ministered to every person at the altar, mm. went off on a, uh, had a dinner break, mm. and I was out the whole time. Wow. I came, came back when people were coming back from the dinner break. And... It was wave after wave of that intense, intense, intense. And I, I, it was like, stop, but don't stop. Stop, but don't, this is awesome. Stop, but don't stop. It was like intense. Mm. And when I, when I came back, I got, and people, by the way, were walking over me to get out the door to go to dinner mm -hmm. and coming mm -hmm. back, mm -hmm. walking over me, coming back. But when I came back, I heard the Lord say, go to the overflow room. So mm. the sanctuary is packed with people, and it was just refilling. Uh, but he said, go to the overflow flow room. I want you to pray for somebody. And I go to the overflow room, and there's only like three ladies mm -hmm. in that room. And so I walked up to them and said, I've been here all day. Can I pray for you? Mm. And they've got this kind of wide-eyed look, because I'm sure I looked <laughs> a mess, <laughs> drunk. I don't know what I look like, but I – and the wor I don't know how the words were coming out, but um, – I said, can I, I looked at the first lady, I said, I've been here all day, and God's just told me to come into this room and pray for somebody, and you guys are here, can I pray for you? And the first woman goes, oh, I'm, I'm fine, I <laughs> came with them. <laughs> and I went to the second woman, and I said, can I, can I pray for you? She goes, oh, no, I'm fine, we came with her. <laughs> and I looked at the third woman, and I said, how can I pray for you? God wants to bring healing today. He goes, she goes, 
well, I can't because my, my shoulder, I can't move my shoulder. I went, uh, can, I, can I touch you? And all I did was touch her back, and all of us heard pop loud, 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 loud. And I said, can you move your shoulder now? And she starts going, oh, my word, oh, my word, yes, oh, oh my word. I could. Uh -huh. So this testimony is because I was desperate for more yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. And kind of like you said, you ruined from that day on, desperate mm. for more of God. So when you are desperate and will submit to him, he will meet you. He will meet you. And mm. if I had not been obedient and gone to that overflow room, I wouldn't have experienced a mm -hmm. healing, a miraculous healing that wasn't me. It was just me being obedient to mm. carry that glory mm -hmm. and to release mm -hmm. the glory into yeah. somebody else. So mm -hmm. that desperation, nothing for, for nothing more than all that God has to you, has yeah. for you, um, is critical. Amen. Let that desperation arise in you. Uh oh, the pastor's wife came forward. Oh. I'm stuck now. I still got two points yet. Come on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll make it quick. No, I, I don't mean that. I just meant don't no, your leave. Words. I'll nobody make it, leave. I'll make it short. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> You've earned my trust. No, no, no. No, I wasn't going to come up here, but I, I, through, through the years, so much what I've heard, I've experienced these things in different points in my life. And I think it's like pivotal times in your life when the Lord, sometimes it's times when you're just seeking him and he, he just gives you something. And other times it's times where he wants to pour out something because he's seen your struggle mm. and he knows where you're at and you aren't even asking for it. Mm. And so the first real mm. major incredible experience was when I was at a boarding high school, a boarding school, and when I was a freshman in high school, and it was an incredible time. It was a Christian place, but it was what's the old saying? Good and the good and ugly both. And um, I had had a really hard year because I had a couple roommates that had a choice of juvenile hall or go to this Christian school. I won't go into all of the stuff they said and did, but. I was just like overwhelmed when you're 14. I don't have a psychology degree. And I went to the dean and I said, she, and she said, and she had a word over me of what she saw God doing in my life. Well, he started young. <laughs> but I'm like, Lord. And all I could do was say, I'll go out and scream in the forest. I'll be nice. And then I'll go pray. So I was doing this through several months going and praying for these people, especially one gal that was just, and so we had a chapel service with an evangelist that came, and I'll never forget this because I saw this one girl that was just, and I won't go into her stuff, she walked forward, and I'm thinking, oh, I've been praying, for praying, praying, and I started to go down. I thought, I'll pray for her, and I'll never forget it, the evangelist who didn't know a thing and it's a little chapel, you know, a little tiny with the wooden benches and a little aisle right here. He comes down. He didn't touch me, but he said, you're not to touch her like that to me. That's all I remember, and I was out. The Lord was like, I'm going to show up. I've got her, but I'm showing up for you tonight. And it was such an incredible thing uh, for a 14-year-old because I don't remember, but hours went by. And the, the piano teacher and the dean was still there. Like it was one in the morning when I came to, and they had to carry me out on the mat because I physically had nothing. I couldn't walk. I had no strength. You know, I, they, I couldn't walk. I had no muscle control. But I was out in the spirit, and I saw the hem of his garment in the heavenlies. And it was like the Lord just restored me refreshed me from all of the hurt and stuff that I was giving back to him constantly saying, Lord, you do it. You do it. You, you touch these people. <laughs> I touched them, you know, and I was trying to be obedient in that, but you know, you take on, you take on so much and God just, what a miraculous thing because, um, the piano teacher said, I went to the piano and if you ever hear it, the end note on a, you know, piano, it's like you can't even, 
he can't even think that high. I mean, he can't even. She said, you were singing the whole time in, in some kind of glory realm, and it was way beyond the highest note of the piano. She said, I can't describe it. And so that was my first experience of supernatural things that I've experienced different times in my life. But it seems like it's been those times when God said, you know, you pour out, you pour out, and he says, you're thinking this, you think you're going to do one thing, but I'm coming for you. And he's so faithful that way. And I just wanted to share that because that I always share it, that it's just so stuck with me. Mm -hmm. You know, wow, God, you showed up to touch me. It wasn't yeah. about, you know, and God dealt with her in the way he wanted to do it, you know. So anyway, just wanted to share you that. You know, I think uh, maybe next week, um, how the Lord leads, maybe we'll hear from others. Right now, let's go to Numbers 20. Let's go to Numbers 20. Everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. You can handle a little bit more? Yeah. Okay, good deal. Uh, Numbers 20, verse 6. I want to talk about the importance of God's glory. Verse 6 of 20, reading from the Tree of Life, it goes like this. So Moses and Aaron went from before the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. Then the glory of Adonai appeared to them. See, the glory of God reveals His attributes, His character, His divine presence does. The presence of God brings light that just expels darkness. The glory of God humbles us as we acknowledge Him. The glory of God speaks to our spirit to encourage us. The glory of God says, let me touch you. Let me quench the thirsting of your soul. Let me comfort you. Let me take you higher. Let me show you more of the goodness of God. What we need is more of His glory to impart. His will, His love, and His divine insight to us. And I want you to follow with me on this thought. Moses and Aaron first came before the Lord. In fact, they fell on their faces, humbled before Adonai. That's what happened. It was after their demonstration of humility and the reverence that the Lord appeared to them. They fell on their faces. They realized they're in the presence of God. Like when we come, we know He's here. And then His glory came. Now, God can do it any order He chooses. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to say this is the way it's going to be. I'm just pulling out a text, a story here that is for us to realize that sometimes we gather just, you know, we're in worship, and God's asking you to get on your face. Do it. If He asks you to lay prostrate, do it. If He asks you to pick up a banner and wave it, do it. Whatever He asks you, I'm not asking, whatever He asks you to do, be obedient. But through that act of obedience, His glory might come upon you and... I can't take credit for what can happen. <laughs> I can't do that. See, James 4, 8 models this same concept Moses and Aaron experienced. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. I mean, that is so 101, but we miss that. So in your hunger, at home or here, wherever you are, that hunger, I'm going to draw near to God. In fact, in your own schedule, you say to yourself, you know what, this Tuesday, I'm going to, I'm going to carve out from 12 to 1 or whatever time, and it's just going to be me and the Lord going to get together. Whether you have the Word in front of you or you're going to, you, know, you have an instrument, you want to worship with Him, but I'm just going to devote this time for Him. Nothing else. No other distractions. Closing the door. He said, when you go in your closet, you close the door. I have to do that. God doesn't do that. I close the door. And then see what happens. What's done in secret will be openly rewarded. Lastly, we'll go to 1 Kings chapter 8. Let's look at the visitation of His glory. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 6. The Kohanim, or the priest, brought the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai to its place. 
into the inner sanctuary of the house to the Holy of Holies, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the ark and its poles above it. But the poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen outside. There they are to this day. Nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone that Moses put there at Horeb when Adonai cut a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. Verse 10, now when the priest came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house of Adonai so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of Adonai filled the house of Adonai. See, God's glory was manifested at the dedication of the temple. Just think about it. After seven years of labor, it was time to dedicate the temple. And here's what Solomon. Now, King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled to him were with him before the ark of sacrificing so many sheep and oxen they could not be numbered or counted. Now, wouldn't it have been just great just to have, the, just to see that? Thank you. Somebody would join me. That'd be cool. I mean, think about it. It says, so many sheep and oxen, they could not be numbered or counted. I mean, what an amazing offering that was before God Almighty. Amazing. What an overflow of giving to the Lord. We can't outgive God. Listen, when God puts it on your heart to give, do it. Nobody here from the front is going to say, you ought to be given this. No one's going to say that. Not in my time here. But whatever he says, you give it. Why? Because God, man doesn't need to regulate the giving system. God is the one that we can hear from, and he puts it on our heart. He says, yes, no, okay, give that amount. Really? You want me to do that? Yes, I want, okay. Because your obedience is not to me, it's to him. I have to be obedient just like you. The sacrificing was out of a heart of joy and thanksgiving. Solomon's obedience to the Lord was right and just. In fact, Solomon said this, Proverbs 21, 3. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Listen to me. He's looking for us to be obedient. We may think, well, I'll give a little extra, or that'll cover some of my no-nos. Listen, no, 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 that, that's not how it works. So <laughs> give. But listen, he wants us to be obedient. He wants us to live a righteous life, a right life. And when we do that, to him it's more acceptable than us bringing this large offering and we're living a double standard. You cannot buy God's grace and mercy in his forgiveness. Well, if I just give a little extra, if I just do a little more of this, more deeds and acts. God will understand my sin problem. God understands everything about us. He's the answer for every sin issue we have. Well, I'm deep in this. Listen, you can't get so deep that God can't pull you out of anything. No, there's no, no. See, Scripture backs that up in 1 Samuel 15, 22. To obey is better than sacrifice. God just wants us to be there. It's real simple. He just wants his kids to be obedient. And you say, that sounds like a fairyland, Jack. Maybe to those that don't have the faith to believe that, you know, God just, just wants me to be obedient. Man, you read Proverbs and you, you know, listen, we're not trying to side up with the world. Don't envy sinners. They may have a lot going materially for right now. But do not envy sinners. No way. I know we've all been there. Boy, I wish I had what they have. I wish I had more of this. Listen, that wish list is not a good wish list. We've all had that, so I'm not here to say, you know, I've never done that. I'm just saying that's not the wish list you want to have. The Ark of the Covenant was placed in the Holy of Holies, representing His presence. God is holy, and He delights when His people live holy lives. You want to bring a smile to the Father? Here's what 1 Peter 1.15 says. Instead, just like the Holy One, 
who has called you. Be holy yourselves also in everything you do. I mean, I got to be holy when I get up and I go to the marketplace. I go to the grocery store. I mean, I got to be holy when I have friends over. You know, I got to be holy when I go to church. Listen, the word, can you say everything with me on three? One, two, three. Everything. That would be everything. That would be when you wake up and you're going to the marketplace. You're going to your job. You're coming to the house of God. You're going to your neighbors. You're going wherever. That means everything. Everything. That's what he's looking at us. huh? That's what he's looking at. The presence of the Lord. His glory is found in holiness. God has a special place for his greater glory. It's a holier place. It's a place that he has designated. And when the priests obeyed the blueprint of God and placed the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies and all things were in order, God then manifested himself with a cloud of his glory that the priests could not stand to minister for the glory of Adonai filled the house of Adonai. Now, sometimes God's glory comes. And it feels like a cloud has come upon us. I mean, it's just like it's resting over us. You know what I'm saying? His cloud is here today. Hallelujah. At times, you can no longer stand. And so you drop to your knees or you become prostrate before him. Listen, a lot of external things that we do is because of the inner moving of the Spirit within us that it's like, I can't help but move him. But he's coming to you, and you say, you know, if you're spiritual, you go on your knees. That makes sense, right? What causes somebody while we're worshiping just to lay out before the Lord? Because you get more brownie points with God? You know what I'm saying? God is doing something in the inner person that is manifested on the outward. And so there's no ABCs here. If you come for an ABC, you know, it's not going to happen. But I'm trusting in God that we pray. It's, it's not when I get here. It's what happens before I get here. Asking God just to minister and prepare us and just do a work in all of us that we all can enter into that beautiful room. His glory humbles us. His glory moves us to respond. Lynette was talking about her situation. She's saying, in an, probably in an algae. Angelic key. Angelic key. Probably what happened that day. His glory can be spontaneous. His glory is contagious. His glory can be unpredictable. We cannot assume we have a breakout on a Sunday. Next week, we'll do the same songs. We'll have another breakout, which ain't going to happen. God is too clever. He's too wise. He says, you know what? If they think they can manufacture my glory showing up, they're fooling themselves. Our God is an awesome God, mighty in all his ways. He can do anything at any time to anyone that's willing to say, Lord. And we might even say, Lord. We may come really tired and worn out because we've been doing what we can during the week. And all of a sudden, his glory comes upon us. And you're saying, I'm not worthy. Yes, you are. God is bestowing his glory because you are worthy. We've got to get past that spirit. Well, you know, I'm just not worthy, you know. Listen, when you humble yourself and you're, you're, you're trying to serve the Lord, listen, you're worthy. It's when you're living a double standard, you're not worthy. God wants, he says, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. He's calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light. His glory is real. Now, let me close with this. What role do we play in God to manifest himself to us? What brings about greater glory? Well, we're going to find out together next week. Let's stand. Have a good day, everybody.